this ICT Basics video, I'm going to go over the concept of the greater context or really the higher time frame draws on liquidity or, in other words, which fair value gap to pick. Um, guys, it doesn't really matter which ICT PD array you're using. So you know that I use one model now. I use the fair value gap. That's it. That's all I use. But it doesn't matter which model you're using. It could be a new day opening gap model. We have one here. Could be volume imbalance, could be consequent encroachment of a wick, could be a breaker block, ICT Judas swing, whatever it is. It doesn't matter what it is. Could be the silver bullet, could be model 2022. The PD arrays only work if the greater context is there. So what do I mean by the greater context? This is where you have to use your higher time frame analysis. And yeah, you can go all the way up to the monthly. Like so for example here on Thursday, uh, August 17th, we can see that the greater context where price was drawing was a monthly buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, and even into this consequent encroachment of a monthly wick. Okay, that is the greater context. And so if you go down now to the 10 minute chart and you look at, you know, what the NASDAQ did today, well, which, um, which PD array worked? Well, this is a breaker block right here. Okay, we have a high, we have a low, we have a higher high. So that would be a breaker block. It was also an opening range gap. So go to regular trading hours. That was a regular trading hours gap or an opening range gap that price respected and then shot much lower. The, but the only reason that it worked, the only reason that those entry models worked is because the greater context or the greater draw on liquidity was this monthly fair value gap, this monthly... Uh, buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, meaning that the market, in order to be efficient, needed to come down and uh, deliver this monthly inefficiency back to the sell side. And, you know, that's how the PD arrays work, guys, is you have to have a greater context or a larger, basically a higher time frame draw on liquidity in order for the entries to work. So, I mean, sometimes you can just get blindly lucky for sure i mean the market does move in two directions and you might by pure happenstance just pick the right direction but if you want to be consistently profitable and this is something that yes i have to work on and, and all that good stuff yes you have to work on your stop losses yes you need to know your macro times your session times um a, a lot of the other concepts that i that i've gone through on ict basics and you should watch my entire playlist but if you want the PD arrays to work, if you want the PD array that you're trying to use, like, look, this is a breaker block right here. We have a low, we have a high, we have a higher, and a lower low. That bullish breaker block, when price came back to it, what did it do? The market went higher. You could be a breaker block trader. Guys, just because I'm using fair value gaps does not mean that you need to only use fair value gaps. You could be a breaker block trader. As long as you have the greater draw on liquidity, as in a higher time frame in efficiency, higher time frame liquidity, or thank God it's Friday model is a, is a good one as well. As long as you have a higher time frame draw on liquidity and you're right about it, any of the PD arrays are going to work and they're going to take you to the same conclusion. Like the market should go down, the market should go up, or it should draw here. Okay, any, any one of the PD arrays, any one of the 81 different ways that Michael has to enter, they will all just take you in the same direction. Because, guys, the market works off of inefficiencies and liquidity with inefficiency coming first. So why do I start on the monthly time frame? Because I'm looking for the greatest draw on liquidity. Okay, and then to spend a lot of time on the weekly time frame. And Michael talks about this because I'm looking to see the greatest draw on liquidity, a higher time frame draw on liquidity, the greater context of what the market should be doing. And as, you know, especially if it's Friday, I'm looking at the thank God it's Friday model because I, I, I'm particularly, I like that model a lot. Uh, I've seen it work a lot on Fridays. So guys, you got to have the greater context. If you gotta, you got to have your top-down analysis. This is something that I have been missing and that you should not miss. As you start with your monthly time frame draws, work down to your weekly, work down to your daily, uh, and then you're gonna find that all of these timing refinements and, and getting down to really the nitty gritty time frames and scalping and all this, it's gonna be so much um, cleaner and you're gonna be a lot more profitable if you remember, if you have your, like, your four hour fair value gaps. I use fair value gaps, right? And thank God it's Friday as well. I use fair value gaps. <coughs> So notice what I have on my chart. I have a bunch of higher time frame fair value gap levels marked on my chart. And I just look and I go, oh, the market just re-delivered uh, re -delivered into the top side of a monthly fair value gap. So we might probably in the overnight session, we're probably going to get a bounce off that. And now I'm looking at my 
hourly and four hourly and thank God it's Friday models uh, higher, I'm going, okay, all things considered, you know, the NASDAQ should probably go up on Friday and draw up back into the 14,800s, maybe get into the 900s as well. Why do I think that? Well, because we just re-delivered into a monthly, uh, a monthly fair value gap, re-delivered a, a few points into it. So I'm expecting we should probably get some support off that. Um, but that's how you do it, guys. And then you go down your lower time frames and look, so that SIBI worked. That SIBI took you even lower. All the SIBIs worked on the way down because the market was drawing to a higher time frame level. So in this video, guys, I just wanna, I want to get it in your heads and I have to get it in my own head as well. You have to have context for your PD rate, whichever one you're using. You could be a breaker block trader. You could be a fair value gap trader like I am. You could trade the model 2022. You could trade any one of Michael's models. Okay, the breaker block is a good model. Like, don't discount it. Um, just because I'm not using it doesn't mean it's not a good model. It is a good model. Uh, but it has to be paired with the right, um, the greater context, the higher time frame draw on liquidity. Okay. That's why I have these, the fair value gap is my model. The fair value gap period, that is my model. So I have higher time frame fair value gaps marked on my chart because I'm looking for the greater context of what price should be doing as well as thank God it's Friday, I use that model as well. But fair value gaps and thank God it's Friday, that's what I use. So I'm looking at those as kind of my higher time frame draws on liquidity. For example, so all right guys, in this video we went over the greater context, the higher time frame draw on liquidity and which should inform you like, well, which fair value gap do I use? Okay, well, what's the higher time frame draw on liquidity? You're not going to know if you don't have it marked out in your chart. So that's why I have these things on my chart. Okay, guys. Bye-bye. Just going to let this video go to seven minutes. Exactly. Just a little bit OCD about that. Um, greater context, guys.